Bilded is so proud to be part of this amazing, bustling city of gold. Come behind the scenes with us as we explore what really goes into the development, refurbishment and creation of this incredible city we call home. From past to present, we look at what makes Josie unique and what the future holds. Bildade on Mix. Good evening. My name is Graham Alexander. We're going to be chatting about the built environment in post-apartheid. Why are buildings where they are? Um, are they going to change? And so on. My guest this evening is architect Althea Peacock to help me along with this discussion. Kay's also got a question out there. Yeah, we're looking for a place tonight that means returning to the place of origin. It's just outside Josie towards the mountains and it's where you'll find your roots see loads of stars and lots of cyclists. Um, if you know the answer to this question, send us an SMS on 41348 and you could win tickets, two tickets, to the first of 10 workshops for homeowners. That's brought to you by Builders and Garden and Home magazine. It's happening on the 6th of May at the Indaba. So let us know if you know where you come from on 41348. In the studio, Simon on the desk, Kay looking after all of us. And most importantly, my guest, Althea Peacock. Althea, thanks so much for coming to chat to us. Good evening, Graham. Pleasure to be here. Althea is an architect. You practice Lemon Pebble Architects. Tell us a little bit about yourself. How did you get into architecture? Um, so our practice was started 10 years ago now. Um, I uh, came out of university uh, not knowing that I was going to start a practice eventually. I worked for a number of prominent architects in Johannesburg. And eventually the opportunity presented itself for me to join my business partner, Tanzim Razak, for us to start our own practice. And it was really out of um, mostly frustration about working for other people and realizing I could be doing this for myself, um, that we actually went ahead and started our own practice. Difficult at times, Extremely. but I admire you guys. <laughs> extremely difficult and challenging but it has its own rewards Althea we have a, an interesting topic this evening yes we the, do the built environment and post apartheid you drive around Joburg or, or particularly through small towns and there are residential areas in a certain place and buildings in a place now a lot of that um, um, is due to apartheid where people had to live in spaces um, by law Correct. but it's sort of perpetuated Yep. If you look at the last 20 years, a lot of it just stayed yep. in place. Yep. So that's what we're going to chat about, like mm. investigate and yes. find out why things are the way they are. Yep. Your view on, on the, the built environment at the moment with regard to where people live. Yeah. So um, our, the way, and particularly Johannesburg, how our city is structured, um, and you, you're speaking about the post-apartheid landscape that we're inhabiting, um, our city was built on having a, a landscape and a population uh, ruled by policy. So policy is what drove our city making. We had a wealthy center with uh, a poor um, support structure of people separated by a buffer zone. So that buffer separated the city and that's, that's actually what is, has driven the landscape of, of our city. Um, and the thing that, that's perpetuated itself is how we're trying to stitch those two landscapes together and it, it's problematic because um, and I'm sure we'll, we'll unpack some of what, what those uh, phenomenon are but that is basically what has shaped our city. If we drive through smaller towns and we'll get into this in a little bit more yes. detail but I just want to pose the, uh, the question or the backdrop if you like. Mm. Um, the location or the Kasi yes. is outside the old town or, yeah. the, or the white town. Yes. It's still like that. Yes. And this perpetuation is when we build affordable homes, we build them where the Lokasi is, yeah. not in the old town. Yeah. Um, fascinating. It is, but I suppose there's also a sadness to it. And my, my take on why those things remain the way they are, it is because communities develop... Uh, an ingrained memory, um, your part of your identity is where you've grown up, um, where your family lived, all, all the cultural things which you attach to home. That is why 
cities work the, and communities and towns work the way they do and that there is a town which is a little bit more affluent has a supporting location right next to it or close to it those things are part of the history of our country um, and I don't think it's going to change it is economy driven um, but I think it, it's race and space driven and it's policy driven and it's all of this history that we have to get beyond um, through over over time I mean, it's, it's not going to happen today it's not going to happen tomorrow what how our cities work that is the landscape that we operate in yeah um, it is what it is it is what it is but and we're going to get into a little yes. bit of detail and yes. try and understand yeah. some of the the dynamics yes. we probably won't get it all right but we'll have a go at it now okay. yes. simon digs up some stuff um every week on on joburg and architecture generally um, Constitutional Court is something that Simon's going to chat to us about, a place that's being yeah. visited regularly it's, it's, in the past few months. <laughs> it's, it's, and it has popped up quite often um, over the past couple of weeks. And, um, I mean, th there's one very interesting fact in it that uh, the actual court itself was built from re salvaged bricks from the from the old prison mm. um, so whatever was there they deconstructed it there we don't like to say demolished because when you demolish you throw it away it was deconstructed and it was rebuilt into the court element which is also very interesting mm. Simon tell us about the the windows <laughs> and behind the judges I find this fascinating well yeah it's, it's, it's actually a little bit of a trick so they are, they've obviously cut the court in uh, into the ground a little bit so that when you're sitting in the court and you're looking towards the judge is that the window behind the judge um, is above his head or behind his head where you can actually look through the window however when you look through the window you're looking in at street level so you see people's legs and feet as they walk past the window and this was done to depict that uh, the law is not above the general man in the street and it's there to serve the people of the street and and that is the actual basis of the constitutional court is that the whole ethos of it is rooted in at serving everybody in south africa so yeah, yeah. in okay. south africa okay. and in this this indus, interesting mosaic um in in joburg with mm. all these different cultures and languages and a court like that hopefully is going to protect us so that one doesn't try and overpower the other and yeah. um, land up in some kind of messy mm. um, revolution. Um, back to this mosaic and understanding why people are where they are and why it's perpetuated. Yeah. Commerce is, is obviously something and a very interesting book, if you haven't read it, mm. it's called Kazinomics by Gigi Alcock. Um, brilliant. Where he, he looks at the economies or casinomics mm. um, in these locations, Soweto, some smaller ones, mm. and the the economies are billions and billions of rands that a lot of people outside of that and big business can't come to grips with. Mm. But I think a lot of those are, I, uh, and you know, I, obviously I stand to be corrected, but it is part about of making um, those communities self-sufficient. Um, so things like stockfells, where people are buying into uh, a system of creating uh, a sustainable wealth for themselves, those are part of development. It's about development of those communities. Um, I, I'm, you know, I'm I'm not an economist. I'm I'm probably a bit out of my depth in knowing what the economy economies of townships are but they are very closely linked to why the townships are where they are i mean you have to make a living you have to feed a family you have to support your children they have to go to school you, all of those things about empowering yourself they're they're not um they're not just flippant words that that get thrown out there they are about making livelihoods and they're about remaking those urban landscapes um it's it's not taking away from what cities are, but it's about what is different about making cities. We, we don't make cities the same way that we, we were taught that cities were made. Cities are made from people being resourceful um, and being innovative about yeah. how they're going to s support themselves. Small business within within um, not only the the locations as we refer to them, but mm. even in a place like um, Bramfontein and so on, they're catering to people's needs within that environment. Mm. And sometimes they what people eat, um, what people drink, and so on, um, and that sets up an economy that keeps people where they are, mm. and sort of answers the question we 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 posed earlier, Althea of. 
why is it perpetuated? You know, if you're saying this space is not really a cool space to live in, yeah. why do you keep living there? There's all sorts of things like yeah. like these shops yes. and, and but I so think it, it's it's the same thing that, that you know, I, I keep harping on about. People get comfortable in, in their space. They know there's a community where they belong to. There's an identity that they have that's rooted in that community. When you go outside of that community where your identity is challenged, where you are not acknowledged, where it's not valued, where um, and, and it comes very, very poignantly back into the built environment, if you are not recognized as having something of value to add, then you regress back into that community. So it, it's, it is about, you know, it, it's something that communities do to themselves, but, and, and, and do to themselves, I mean, we, we restrict ourselves and we don't um, celebrate the richness of what, what our communities have to offer. So I think it's out of habit. Um, I think it's out of human nature that people are fearful of something that they don't understand. They, it's something outside of their general experience. So they, they lock themselves into those communities and only in the sort of forceful digging where you start asking a person, who are you? What is your value? What do you contribute? How do you identify yourself? What is your space making practice? What is your what are your rituals that enrich your life? How do you make place? How do you how do you live in the world as someone that I don't know? Only then do people start questioning why they are in those environments and why they are locked into staying into those yeah. environments. And it's it's a difficult thing and it's so closely linked to people's economies and what they're actually um, able to do. Yeah. When we come back, Althea, I want to I want to get into the subject of um, these these environments, particularly what we loosely refer to as as locations. Mm. Urbanization is something we've we've chatted about on, on a number of shows now, mm. and and it's it's a phenomenon all over the world, and I think we sometimes make the mistake of thinking of urbanization as the city, and it's not only the city. People are moving into highly or highly dense, densified areas like mm. Alex and mm. like Dip, Dipsluit mm. and one has to question now hold on there's already too many guys why do you live there obviously you live there because it's cheap mm. or virtually nothing mm. in in some areas now we can talk about this and we've as I've said we've done, yeah. done many shows but if you look at the city so let's move into the yes. Johannesburg city how are how is everybody getting together from, uh, from, uh, from different cultures, different languages? It seems to be working. It does seem to be working. And I think it's because people are taking ownership of their spaces and saying, we need to build communities. How do we build communities? How we've, how we've done it historically. We find like-minded people who share the same interests and who share the same goals. But how we need to make that work in a city is we need to reimagine the city. So we're taking buildings that used to be office buildings and making high density houses out of them, reimagining what the streetscape is about, making commercial edges of those. And they're not uh, your high end uh, anchor tenants that you get in the malls. They're smaller shops where you can have a hair salon or a cell phone repair shop. So you allow people to build an economy and build a life and build a community around those things and slowly you start to reshape what that environment is as a neighborhood rather than as part of just sure. the city let's check with Kay who got it right okay well the word I was looking for was Maroping but I was taking answers of the cradle <laughs> because well done to all of you know where your roots are and seriously go out there um, it, it really is a place worth visiting. Um, the museum's fantastic. And, and, you know, they're not paying me to say this. It really is an amazing place. And well done to Manette Mansfield for uh, winning two tickets to the first homeowners workshop that's happening on the 6th of May. If you do want to book for it, um, if you didn't win, just go to caxtonevents.co.za and it's, it's up there. Um, really will be worth your while. Check out our Facebook page, Building Joburg on Mix. You can have a look at all the pictures of what we're talking about, like the Constitutional Court and so on. And the show's also videoed. You can check why we aren't on TV. Um, 
Check it out. It's um, building Joe Simons. Speak for yourself. eh? (laughs) (laughs) And Kay is saying, listen, it's you, not me. Um, Building Joburg um, on Mix. Check out our our Facebook page. Thanks to Kay for looking after all of us and producing the show. Simon on the desk and Ian doing the the video. Special thanks to to everyone for listening and to my guest, Althea Peacock. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. We do this every Wednesday between 6 and 7. Chat you next week. Ciao. There must be so much love in my heart that it would tear me apart. And I know, although you couldn't see, to hurt you.